heard the conversation. Ah, so, yes. <laughs> so I was wondering whether, whether there were salient points there that, that you agree with or disagree with or, or can add to. Yeah, look, you made a lot of salient points. I think that obstruction of justice is a separate crime in the same way that if someone were conducting an investigation uh, into anything uh, and somebody was embarrassed and just wanted to go away and you lied to an agent who was conducting the case, you could be charged with making a false statement to an agent even if there was no underlying crime. So I agree that technically it is uh, a separate crime. And I, I was really struck by your use of a quote by Lavrenti Berea, who used to be the head of the, uh, the Russian secret police under Stalin, that if you, know, you, if you give me the man, I'll find you the crime. Uh, and obviously if you, if you have a special prosecutor with a very, very broad mandate, you know, and they keep turning over rocks, eventually they can come up with something. I worked in an independent counsel's office for a while, so I know a little bit about what that is, uh, that is like. I'm not surprised that there's an investigation going on. This apparently began very, very shortly after Jim Comey uh, was fired. Uh, and you know, Bob Mueller's been given a broad mandate to look into all things Russian. Uh, so I'm not surprised that he's looking into this. The bit about going to examine the financial dealings of Trump associates. That's a little puzzling to me. You posited uh, some good reasons. Maybe he was bribed. I suppose it's also the possibility that people could be extorted, right? They're aware of some financial impropriety, and the Russians say, play ball with us or else we're going to out uh, your financial misdeeds. It seems that once you start getting to that, you're getting a bit far afield. But you know, we'll see where Bob Mueller goes with all this. Well, I really wish you wouldn't have outed me on where I got that quote, because now <laughs> I could be under investigation with some type of rush. I, 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 I'm like, that's a despicable lie. I have not, you know, it's not true, and I don't have anything. Uh, who'd you say was Stalin? Am I, I'm quoting Stalin? or, or uh, 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 the, the Stalin, the head of his secret police, oh. Lorenti Berea. Yeah, no, you're in trouble now, I can tell. <laughs> I am. I'm going to be on Okay, let me ask you this. Uh, and and And... You know, I, when, I, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, you know, you're, you're going to find Democrats and Republicans everywhere. So Mueller picks, Mueller picks all these Democrats uh, to, to staff up on, and he's also very close to, to, to Comey as far as friends. And I said, well, right. he's an honorable man, I'm sure that, you know, and, and bipartisan, um, the response when he was uh, selected was, was, was positive. But then again, I started thinking, you know, if, if, if you really... I don't know what his opinion of Donald Trump is, but right. if, if he has the same opinion as some of these other people at this point, is it possible he could be looking for something um, rather than just trying to get to the bottom of the whole Russian thing? Could he be looking for the crime to fit the man? Well, let's, let's hope not. Bob Mueller has uh, an excellent reputation. Uh, he's got to be a little bit careful because there's no question that he is close to Jim Comey. He dealt with him every day when Comey was deputy attorney general. He met with him, you know, to do threat assessments, and, and Mueller was FBI director. I've heard that a number of his uh, uh, people whom he's brought on to his team have contributed heavily to Democrats. That's not necessarily, right. uh, uh, you know, I'm not looking to impugn their integrity, but I must say, if they were investigating Barack Obama, uh, and they'd filled uh, an investigative team with people who had contributed heavily to Republicans, or if they were looking into Donald Trump and they'd, contrib they'd staffed the team with people who'd contributed heavily to Republicans, you might hear people on the other side of the political aisle complaining about this. I think it's important that whatever happens at the end of this investigation, that it, that it be fair and that it appear to be fair to the American public. And so I think he needs to be careful about who he picks on his team, and he also needs to be careful that he keeps an arm's length distance from Jim Comey, whose credibility uh, may also be subject to attack. He did a pretty good John, job digging himself up the other day by you know, announcing that he was a leaker, for instance. John, does it appear to be fair to you, meaning you look at that group that's currently around Mueller? That's, you know, that's, that's hard to say. He's got Michael Dreeben from the Solicitor General's office uh, advising him on criminal law matters. Michael Dreeben is a, a highly skilled professional. He's got Andrew Weissman, who's the head of the fraud division. So you're Some not concerned? You know, we'll see how he conducts himself. I think I have a lot of faith in Bob Mueller, and just because an investigation has begun, we're a long, long way from charges being leveled or even sustained. Right. And, you know, John is with the Heritage Foundation. No, so I know. He's the only reason I said the donations thing to me is less, is less interesting only because I look and say to myself, you know, Donald Trump, Jared Kushner, and Gary Cohn all made donations to Democrats. So, you know, it's all very. It's complicated. So anyone can make a mistake, is what you're saying. <laughs> um,
John, thank you. Um, we got to go. Uh, there's more to talk about, but uh, we got three hours. It just won't be with you. <laughs> anyway, thank Great you. Great to be with Sorry. you.